Welcome to Pure Soul Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando. And we're on episode 215. Yeah, 215. And we are back. And 2020 is over, which means it is 2021. And, and the world's better. Everything's better. Everything is fixed. There's no more problems in the world. All of the craziness is gone. And now we get a brand new fresh start and things are perfect, right? Sure. Sure. You know, it's, wait, this is the, the so... Uh, how can I put this? It's not the word overrated I'm looking for. There's just a word for like when something you expected something and it doesn't end up as great as you thought it'd be. What is that word? Underplayed? No. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll find the word. <laughs> okay, all right. We'll find the word. It was anticlimactic. There, that's that what, what it was. Okay. That's the word I was looking for because... I, I, I told you this before the podcast. I feel like nothing's changed. Like mm-hmm. we're still in the same place, but... There has been a lot of change as yeah, and, far as the reselling space. Yeah. And I love, I love New Year's. I love the start of a new year. And I know that, you know, we can look at all of the, the, the statistics as far as, you know, people not keeping New Year's resolutions. And there's, there's really like a huge divide as far as New Year's resolutions. Like some people love them. Some people absolutely hate them and think they're ridiculous. And that's why. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. And, and I get that. And I understand why some people have those feelings, but I do think there's something about a, a fresh start, right? A lot of times. You know, the best time to start anything, if you want to break a bad habit or start something new is today, right? Like there's not, it's whatever today is, is that's when you should start it because it's better than starting it down the road. But, but even with things like I'm going to start my diet and a lot of times it makes sense to say like, all right, I'm going to start it on Monday because then I can get into my routine or I'm going to start. So sometimes the start of something can Mm -hmm. kind of be a little bit helpful to kind of get you into the right groove because it's already, I'm going back to work. So I'm going to bring my, my lunch to work today and then I'm going to start my my diet or whatever it is. So there is something I feel like about a new year that can kind of make you reflect, right? Because a lot of times progress is a, a matter of reflecting on the past, looking at what were some of the things I could maybe fix and do better. And what do I want to accomplish this coming year? Because it's a nice, even though it's arbitrary, it is a nice time frame that you can kind of uh, quantify and say, I want to accomplish this. Maybe it's your birthday, right? Like before I turn, you know, 35, I want to accomplish this or before 2021 is over. These are the things I want. So I like to do a word of the year, like something that I can kind of focus on throughout the year to kind of anchor me as far as what what it is that I'm trying to achieve that year. Uh, so do you have a do you have a word for 2021? So it's this is pretty interesting. So first of all, I kind of played that first part of the podcast because I want, you know, I'm trying to make it seem like, oh, well, things are the same. Nothing's changing, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is the word of the year changes all that. Now, before I say this, I will say I was, I believe before Gary V in this word, because he, I know a lot of people listen to Gary V and watch Gary V and he threw out this word. But if you look at the Instagram post, I used it first. So not saying that Gary V looked at my post and said, Hey, this is it, you know, but I truly believe the keyword, which it's a reflection of 2020, because I think it's what made the game change for a lot of people and what can make the game change for everyone in 2021. And the word is perspective, Mm. right? It's all how you see it, right? We could have seen 2020 as a year of just terrible things, which a lot of terrible things happen, right? Turmoil, conflict, (laughs) a pandemic. We could also see it as it was one of the best years ever for reselling for your business, maybe even, you know, for your family, whatever it is, it's all on how you look at it. It's all on perspective. And I truly believe 2021 can be an incredible year for all of us if we come in with the right perspective and understanding that it's all how we look at things. Is it a positive look or is it a very pessimistic look? And I truly believe that's going to be the game changer for everyone this 2021. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I think perspective is awesome. And, uh, so Gary V, if you are listening, which obviously you do listen and and follow us, <laughs> oh uh, you're gonna have to pay us some royalties for for copying. Uh, no, just just kidding. But um, so I think perspective is great. The can even goes back to uh, what I love about like that thing I talked about. Good that section, you could just look it up. Jocko Willink, good, and that there's the little speech, a part of a speech where he gives where. Um, he talks about that, where no matter what somebody, one of his subordinates would come to him with some crazy crisis or problem with life or something going on, his response was always good. And he's like, well, wh- how can you say good? He's like, because well, there's something good in it, right? Like you didn't get the new equipment. Good. We could practice on improving with what we do have. You didn't get the job. Good. That means you get to hone your skills and become even better for for another job. Like whatever the, it is, it's that perspective of this can be good. So yeah, I think 2021 perspective, that's good for for you. Um, So my word 
This is a weird one. So in the past, oh, we're having two words this year. Well, well, for me, I never had a word before. Probably, I, I, I always have a, a like a personal word, okay, like okay. my word for the year. Um, so for me, my personal word this year. So instead of making like New Year's resolutions, I, I I do the one word thing, and within that, I encompass a lot of ideas and plans and things I want to do. So um, in the past, I've had words like discipline. I've had commitment. I've had consistency. Um, I've had content. I've had a lot of different words, a lot of C words, I guess. Um, so I've had a lot of words in the past um, that I feel like I've done a pretty good job about halfway through the year. I, I kind of forget about the word and then I have to remember like, okay, like what was my focus this year? So this word is different in some ways because it it applies to business, but it's a little bit different. I think it applies more to just my outlook in life, kind of like you said with perspective, but my word is gravitas, <laughs> right? And gravitas is... Uh, oh, in Latin? Is yeah, that Latin? It's, it's a Latin. Okay. And it means... It basically, the, the the direct translation would be something like gravity or weightiness. Um, and it's a kind of like a personality trait that that you would, I would say, is admirable in somebody. Somebody has gravitas. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that they're they're kind of a weighty person, that they're not easily to ignore, that they take things seriously, that they have a uh, kind of a, uh, and it's not just like a serious demeanor, but there's something about them where they they understand the importance of things and they they know how to handle the world around them, right? Someone with gravitas is somebody who, and again, another thing with gravity is they can kind of pull people to them, right? There's somebody who can, they, they can be that anchor. They can be that person that that can, can stand firm and, and get through things. And so for me, 2021, gravitas is my word. Uh, and I just want to have that kind of solid focus of who do I want to be? Who do I see myself? And how does that apply to things like business? How does that apply to my nine to five? How does that apply to reselling? How can I have gravitas and reselling and recognize yeah, this is a hobby, but but also there's some seriousness seriousness here. I'm providing for my family. I'm able to teach my son skills that he can use. So when I start to see my business in this way, it's less flippant and and allows me to focus a little more and make more profit and have all those other benefits like teaching my son skills. So my word for 2021 is gravitas. Let us know below what's your word. What's the word that that you kind of want to focus on 2021? My wife said her word is survive which I think is pretty funny, right? Like just, you know, get through it. You got to gotta to, to make it through because we've got a lot of craziness already planned this year. But uh, yeah, so what's your word? Let us know. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting where we were six months ago. Not, no, six, has it been, no, it's been like nine months, right? I think I, I'll never forget sitting here, I was reflecting on this the other day where we had to cancel our meetup. Mm -hmm. And it just, it seems like so long ago. Like so, but it was only nine months ago. And, you know, we've been we've been through a lot and we're still going through a lot. I mean, I, we're not done. I, I'm kind of shocked. I thought by now we'd we'd be I don't know, maybe I'm just naive. I thought we'd be over stuff, you know, and it just seems that things not that they're getting worse, but things haven't gotten better. Right. We're kind of in the same pattern and it's OK because <laughs> it's about perspective. Right. It's how I see it. All I know is, listen, it's 2021. It gives me a time to reset, re take a look at my reselling business, reflect on the past and make improvements and just have a far better 2021. And then I had a 2020. And actually, it is the beginning of a new decade, right? 2021 is the beginning of a new decade, not 2020, right? So here we go. Now, before we talk about, you know, what we're like, are we still talking about what we're looking forward to? Um. Yeah, like I mean, business or practical wise, or should we? I mean, this is kind of tied into my catching up and everything. Okay. So, do you want me to start? Sure. Okay. All right. So, Q4 was incredible. And we're going to have our Q4 episode at the end of January. I'm still waiting for all the returns and everything, you know, to kind of settle down. And uh, actually, the returns haven't been that bad. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, I have gotten some messages and we'll talk about lost packages that are still out there and so on. Uh, but you know, I, I never have let my eBay store <laughs> fall apart the way it has. Right. And, and not that it fell apart in a, in a bad way. I just, I was so focused on Amazon, so focused on Amazon, uh, that, you know, I kind of let it go by the wayside, but I still was making sales, but I looked at my numbers and I am down 30% right now on eBay compared to last year, which is 30% is a lot. You know, 5% is is pretty high, but 30% is a lot. And so, you know, I what I've been working on, it, it's, it's first of all, I, I, I needed to take a break. Like I needed to step back and I didn't go anywhere. I, I wanted to travel and then, you know, all this COVID stuff is happening now. And I kind of, 
I, I still I'm going to travel, but I, I'm kind of laying low for a little bit just because it just I don't know. It just there's a different feel about what's going on right now. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of weird where I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But anyways, uh, you know, I, I decided to start rebuilding my eBay store. And I got to tell you, it's about perspective because I was out there trying to source. I, I started hitting thrift stores. Man, the thrift stores are bare out here. Mm. Have you tried to go at all lately? Yeah, I've tried a, a, a few thrift stores, and yeah, same thing. I mean, I've got a. There's a few thrift stores that you can drive to, to that that have some stuff. No, even those. Really? Yeah, I haven't. I haven't been um, to to any of the driving ones recently. I've just tried local ones, and uh, yeah, it, it it hasn't been hasn't been great. And even garage sales, like the other day, I oh, I you actually up, went? No, I was oh, going okay. to. I looked up on my yard sale treasure map or whatever it's called, and I looked up Friday night, which is usually like it starts, my phone starts vibrating like crazy and it shows me all the dots everywhere in my area. And it was like nothing in like a, a 10 mile radius. And so you have alerts like set? You have alerts set on your uh, yard sale treasure map? No. Out? So when I click on it, it it's uh, it just vibrates as it finds oh, okay, locations. Okay, okay, right? okay. So usually like I get a bunch of vibrations as soon as I open up the app. But yeah, there was nothing. Yeah. So, and which is normal. I mean, not, not saying that things are different. As far as garage sales, that, that's normal right now. But as far as the thrift, my experience has been that January one, they're pretty ready to go. Like I remember last year, I sourced a bunch of stuff uh, within the first five days of January, and I was ready to go. So that, that was kind of my anticipation, and I didn't find anything. Then I started seeing people on social media going to Ross and finding all kinds of stuff. So I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go source some Ross. I go to Ross bare like there there was nothing and it's not like i was only driving you know five miles away from where i live i actually was driving out a half hour hour almost two hours away and there was just nothing and so i was like this is interesting but again it's about perspective so i basically took the idea and i said you know what i know that this is the way things are in san diego why am i trying to you know do the same thing with the same result and so i went on offer up and i started looking for local deals and Sure enough, I posted this on Instagram uh, this past weekend. I had a huge Harley haul, right? I did the same thing we've talked about before where somebody was selling a Harley item. I clicked on their name, saw that they're selling other Harley items, said, hey, I'm interested in more of your items if if you're willing to sell it all and met up. And sure enough, made a sweet deal and bought out all his Harley stuff. Now, it wasn't a lot. It was a $300 deal, but I'm, I'm going to make over 1K on it. And so I'm like, hey, this is a great way to start Q1. And... I have a helper now, which I'm trying to scale. I, I really want to scale my eBay this year. I actually bought another massive light box. You know, yeah, you sent me that uh, text message uh, of like, "Hey, this is a good deal," and it was like a big light box, right? Yeah, and it was two hundred forty four dollars, which is sixty six dollars than the normal price, which yeah. is that's third off. So, but you got it. I did buy it. Nice. I bought it. It was just a deal I couldn't pass up. And you know whether it worked out or not. But I, I talked to my helper and and we agreed on a space. And so I think this year is going to be the year where I don't take a lot of pictures of items. Where it's all going to go to my helper, and I'm just going to focus on sourcing and sourcing and listing. Now, what I mean listing is the listings will already be created for me, and I'm just going to go and update them and you know make them go live on eBay. Mm. So, so that's my goal. And, uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of housekeeping, man. It, it just, that that's basically it. So basically it's repairing a lot of things that kind of fell apart during Q4. You know, I had to get my car fixed. Luckily it was only like a hundred dollar fix. My battery kept dying and it was a AC relay switch that stayed on. And, uh, I had, uh, <laughs> my fridge stopped working while I was gone. Actually, my oven isn't working now. So, you know, there's, I feel, you know, it just basically, I just, was so focused on business and I'm trying to repair everything mm. as I go by. So how about you? Yeah. I mean, um, I kind of, again, took some time off, which was really nice and needed. Um, even, even the way we did the podcast with doing shorter podcasts was kind of nice during that, that time frame. Uh, but yeah, just enjoying family during the Christmas break. Uh, as a teacher, I get those, you know, a couple of weeks off. In fact, I, you know, have to go back. So this, this is mm. airs on Monday. So I'm at work today, first day back. And it's always hard getting back into the groove, but even again, you know, talking about uh, new year's resolutions, one thing I've noticed with, you know, you take a couple weeks off of something and you're in this weird phase where you're almost like lazy 
apathetic. You don't want to go back. You don't want to like, it's hard to get the wheels turning, right? Cause a lot of, a lot of work is it's just momentum. Once you get momentum going, uh, you're good to go. I had a, a, a wrist injury, uh, like a month and a half back. And so I stopped lifting weights cause it was pretty bad. And then because of that, my, my diet went out of control and, and it's, you spiral mm. down really easily and it's hard to get momentum going back in the right direction. But again, one of the nice things is, okay, Monday comes, I've got to go to work, right? I've got to get ready. I got to start actually doing things. And as you start to feel the routines get back into, into place of, all right, setting out my food for the day for, you know, the next day, getting things ready, setting out my gym clothes, all of those things, getting ready. It's almost like you've got muscle memory and your body's like, okay, I can do this. I can, I'll be all right. And there's a little bit, even though you're like, I don't want to go back. I wish I could just have another couple of days of just laying around and doing nothing. There's almost a little bit of excitement of I'm ready to start going again. I'm ready to get things done. And I feel the same way about reselling. So during these last couple of weeks, we've had consistent sales. So pretty much every day, sometimes every other day, uh, coming to the office, packing up stuff, sending it, which is nice because still have money coming in, but we haven't done any listings. We basically have gone two weeks with, without listing, uh, very little sourcing, tried to do a couple of, like I said, thrift stores and just didn't do super great. Uh, so it's it's kind of this momentum slowed, but I'm ready to get it going again. And I know that power of momentum of, all right, once I get going, once we take those first few steps and we really get rolling, we're going to be good to go. So I'm really excited about that. We've had quite a few sales um, and you know, going into the start of the year, uh, I saw you had a post on it on Instagram, which I think was great as far as, all right, so now it's time to say last year's done, kind of start planning for taxes. And what can I do this year to make sure we have the best year possible? So we're already, my wife and I, I have sat down, talked about ways that we're going to um, you know, pay off more debt, ways that we're going to um, save more money, all of these things. And how are we going to increase our eBay sales and make more money in this that we can be better off at the end of 2021 than we were at the end of 2020. So kind of just that perspective, like you were talking about of here we go, here's the start of something new and how can we improve on what we've did before? So it was nice getting sales, um, you know, some things that were, were big items. And that's another nice thing too, is we've sold quite a few bigger items, which I've enjoyed because there's a really good chance that I'm gonna be moving locations where I have all of my inventory stored and so I need to like build a storage shed and all of these things. And there's a lot involved in it. And the more items I could sell before that happens, the less yeah, I have to move. I so that. I even have more motivation to sell, 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 which means I'm taking deals. I'm, I'm listing larger items locally if I need to, whatever I have to do to get rid of things uh, so that a move will be easier. And then hopefully that will lead to, you know, a, a more functioning and, and, and more efficient uh, system as we move into 2021. No, and perspective is so big and I, I don't want to harp on this too much, but you know, 2020, it really was about perspective, right? There's a lot of people that thought, you know, I, I'm, I'm done with Risa, especially in the beginning. I remember those, those, and I wasn't one of these people, but those that took the initiative March through May to really level up their reselling, to, to do what they could to find different ways to source and find, you know, different buyers and different kind of inventory. Like they were the ones that really cashed out in 2020, right? The ones that were like, well, I think reselling's done. You know, there, there's no way to keep this going. Those are the ones that maybe walked away from reselling. Maybe they're not even listening to the podcast anymore, right? They kind of just stepped away, right? And so to me, I, I reflect back on 2020 and I go, I lost so much opportunity. I've shared this before. I think in those three months, not that I gave up, I just didn't change my perspective to, Hey, maybe there's a different way to do things. Right. And if I had done that, I think I would have made a lot more money. And it took until June for me to realize there's so much more opportunity. I better capitalize on this. And I took that all the way through Q4 and had the best Q4 of my <laughs> reselling life. And now I'm looking to have the best reselling year in 2021. Cause I really feel I have a grasp on what I'm doing. And so I, I totally agree with you. And, and we'll talk about that in our upcoming episode. Hey, it's Q1. What do I do now? Uh, but for right now, I've got some random stories you want to talk about. Yeah. Um, so I had one that was pretty funny. So we talked uh, a few times about the uh, AT&T signs that I bought. I bought a, a whole lot of AT&T signs. Hustle. Yeah, it was it was a pretty good deal. 
Um, I, you know, negotiated with the guy, talked him down to the best deal that I can get him to. And the nice thing was they're already all in boxes. Okay. So I only had to take one picture and I can't remember the total number. I had like 20, 25, something like that of these signs and they're already boxed. So I just had to take pictures, one listing, 20 quantity, right? And good to go. So now as they sell, all I've got to do is slap a label on, send them out. I don't have to worry about finding a box that fits them or anything. So I've been consistently like every month or every couple months, I sell one and it's a nice, you know, $40, $50 in my pocket when they sell. Now this, we've talked in the past about feedback and a lot of times feedback is very, uh, it's, it's like Boiler cut plate. and paste, right? It's A plus seller, fast shipping, all of these things. Uh, but I had one of probably the funniest feedback that I've ever received because it was just so random and didn't really go to anything. Because I like reading through like Amazon reviews or Amazon questions where people answer and they're like hilarious. And you could tell somebody was, you know, put a bunch of time into it to make it funny. But this one just didn't really make sense, but it made me chuckle anyways. And I sold one of those AT&T signs and here was the uh, the response, the feedback. Yeah, baby. I like it like that. I've got the what? soul. I've got the feeling. And that was the feedback. Okay. And that was over the sign? An AT&T sign. Yeah. So one more time. Yeah, baby. I like it like that. I've got the soul. I've got the feeling. All right. Now, is that is that like a line to a song? Maybe maybe it's like a line to a song. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. I mean, there is that one song, but I, I don't know. I mean, that's... That's kind of interesting. I mean, maybe maybe they're a big AT and T fan. Who knows? Maybe I don't know. So let us know below in the comments. What's the What's <laughs> the best know. feedback you've ever received from somebody? Um, maybe something funny or something random that somebody gave. But it kind of made me think. So as a as a seller, obviously I need to leave the proper kind of feedback. But I think going forward as a buyer, I'm just going to leave something silly. Something I appreciate ridiculous. the unique ones. Yeah, just just uh just to change it up a little bit and. Uh, you know, maybe go overboard. So that way it's like ridiculous. Like this is the greatest item ever. I will go to my deathbed happy because of this seller sent me this item, you know, something ridiculous. Pretty um, intense right yeah, there. I don't know. So, um, or, or like just drop the whole, I don't know how many characters you get, but you know, drop like movie lines or something randomly in there. And, you know what? That would be pretty cool. If, if you somehow all your feedback were famous movie lines, right? I don't know. I, would you get it? Would that break any policy? I don't think that would break any policy. I, I think know. it'd make things interesting. You could just put keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. That That's what I should. That's what should I. That's all the feedback I should leave for From all my buyers. <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's, that's our trademark. All right. Well, hey, something just sold over talking about that. Perfect time to leave that feedback. Nice. And then, so, th so that was one thing. And the other quick thing was um, we had an item, we had a case opened up against us for an item not getting there, right? And we know that packages, you know, all of the craziness with, with packaging uh, and the U USPS and all of that. Uh, but this one was interesting because it was a global shipping. And so oh. we're like, all right, well, we're probably fine. It left Kentucky like two days before they opened up the case and so we're like, oh, you know, it was a little late getting to Kentucky, but it wasn't that late getting to Kentucky, maybe a couple of days. They sent it from Kentucky to wherever it was going. And we knew that eBay was probably going to side with us. Not a big deal. They had tons of protection for global shipping program. And within like an hour, eBay just sided with the buyer. And, really? and, and, and nothing against us. Like we weren't like they didn't do anything to mm -hmm. us. They just completely refunded the buyer and no negative impact to our account. Oh, OK, so, Which, yeah, yeah. so so it didn't it didn't affect us. It wasn't like they decided against us. They decided with the buyer. And but I'm just thinking you literally sent that out of your warehouse like two days ago. Like they are going to get that item and you already refunded them. Like that's crazy to me. So I hey, mean, I'm good. This is why we're such advocates of the eBay global shipping program. It's just so nice because I'll talk about this later on, but I've been getting so messages like my item hasn't arrived. Refund me. Mm. I'm like, no, why, like, why am I going to refund you? Like the item is out there now after a long period of time, I might do that. But after two days, yeah. like who's, why would I refund you? You know? So, so good. I'm glad, I'm glad the global shipping worked out for you. It's true. So, and actually, uh, remember I had talked about way back, I sent an item to Peru and one to Mexico so the item in Peru actually made it before Christmas. Hmm. So if it recap real quick, I had sent something out. It wasn't global shipping program. It was through international standard delivery or whatever it's called, the other program on eBay. But I did it incorrectly and I just sent it out via pirate simple export. And so it didn't go to, I guess if you do it through eBay, it goes to one of their warehouses, kind of like global shipping. 
So this one was directly from me to the guy in Peru. And it said it wasn't going to arrive in Peru until, I believe, the end of December. The only reason I know it showed up, the tracking just stopped. It stopped in Lima, Peru, I think sometime in the November. And that's all. I, I had no idea. But the guy left me a positive feedback in Spanish. And luckily, I can read Spanish. I'm like, hey, sweet. It made it. And he's like, yeah, these were just the shoes I was looking for. Nice. So, so it arrived. Now, the package that I sent to Mexico supposed to arrive in January sometime that I sent back in October. I haven't heard back. So no news is good news. Let's put it that way. All right. So I don't know. I think this could be an episode in itself maybe, but so I had mentioned, you know, after reading rich dad, poor dad and a level up review, how they had talked about how one father gave his son a, a set of money, I think for their car and then said, Hey, you know, you make the rest of this, uh, you know, with this money, you use this money to make more money. And, you know, trying to build that entrepreneur spirit. And so I did that with my son uh, when he turned 15 this past November because he's getting a car when he's 16. And, you know, we had talked about what do you want to do? And he just, you know, he landed on that. I just want to do reselling. And I'm like, are you sure? Like, you know, you can do what you want. Like, I understand. Like, if you don't want to do what your dad's doing, I, I totally understand that. I think it's an easy thing to do. And that was my fail right there. It was an easy thing to do. So. I forget and I and 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 I hope that as you know resellers that are documenting our progress that we're actually helping new resellers too because you know I I was helping my son you know figure out how to do reselling right so you know we finally decided this uh this Christmas break we're going to go to a couple stores and we're going to do some sourcing and my goal was for him to start listing once they have five items. So help them set up the eBay store, right? That wasn't too hard. Setting up eBay was pretty, pretty, pretty easy. And then we went sourcing and, you know, I, I said, Hey, why don't you take out, you know, a hundred bucks? Let's see if we can get like 20 items, right? Yeah, we, we found two. Mm. Now here's my disclaimer. My disclaimer is I've shared this before. If I could restart, you know, from day one reselling, there's a lot of junk I wouldn't buy. Would you agree with that? Yeah, true. Right. And so he, he actually has, you know, me by his side and he's doing all the research, but me being there forces him not to pick up trash. Right. Right. And so had he gone on his own, he maybe would have picked up, you know, who knows, 40, 50 items and it would all been trash. This time he just picked up two and they're both good sellers. Which makes me sad because, you know, we went to six stores. We went to uh, two thrift. No, we went to three thrift stores and we went to three off price stores to do some retail arbitrage. Because I said, hey, son, if you don't like going to the thrift and getting dingy and looking through piles of stuff, you can always go to retail arbitrage. It's just going to cost you more money and it's going to have more competition. And so I wanted to give him, you know, kind of a taste of both. And. You know, he was fine with either. He was fine with either. But he kept saying, Dad, you keep finding stuff, but I can't find anything. I'm like, I know this is how it goes. Like, so, for example, we were at uh, that one really nice store we like to go to, mm -hmm. which we didn't find much. But I did find a newly sealed uh, Lego set, which, you know, he didn't think about picking it up because it didn't look like anything great. But it was a discontinued set and I paid 25 for it and I'm going to sell it for $9,200, right? But he, he missed it. It was right in front of him. And so it reminded me of how tough it is when you first start. Mm. Right. I, I don't think everybody does what you did. When you first started, you found that skin caliper at that store. Mm. Uh, how much did you pick it up for? 30 bucks? Yeah. And you sold it for over 100. Yeah. Right. And then you picked up something else for 20 and you sold it for whatever. Like you had a you had a duck decoy. You paid five and you sold it for a good amount. It was I think I made like 50 cents for it. Yeah. And I sold it for like 80 bucks or something. Okay, crazy so like that, yeah. that is rare. That is rare. And I want to remind you guys, if you're a new reseller, it takes time. So did you set him up with his own eBay account? Yeah. Nice. Well, I mean, it's my eBay account, right? Because you can't have your own eBay account until you're right. 18. But, but, but it's another store. It's another store. Nice. Yeah. It's his own store. And, you know, he has his own account and everything. And uh, I felt really bad for him. Like, I wanted outsourcing. I kind of wanted to just say, here, this is yours. This is yours. But I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And I said, hey, son, this is why I picked this up. So along the way, I'm showing him. Here's the thing. He sees what I sell every day. Mm. Right. But unless you are cognizant, unless you're paying attention, 
to what's going on in front of you, you don't do anything right. with that information. Right. And so I also had to remind them, son, you understand, like I can go into a store and pick up stuff all the time because I've been doing this for a long time. And I spent hundreds, maybe thousands of hours watching YouTube videos, sourcing, listening to podcasts and, and you know, getting all the information I can. And he kind of looked at me, he's like, all right. Like, you know, he, he understood that. And so I strongly recommend if you're new to reselling, if you just try to go in raw and go into a thrift store and just start researching, I think that's going to be really, really tough. Right. I, you need to listen to podcasts like ours or, or other podcasts that are about reselling or YouTube videos. Like you have to inform yourself. And it has to be a thing that in the beginning you are all in because if you're just trying to learn by going thrift store to thrift store, it's going to take longer. Right. So it was a, it was a big reminder to me about how tough it was in the early days. Cause I remember in the early days picking up so much junk. And the only way I learned how not to pick up that junk was <laughs> by going, oops, I'm never going to pick that up again. And so, I don't know. It was just a good, it was a good reminder to me of breaking down information better for all of us, especially those of you that are new to the podcast. And so if you ever have questions, let us know in the comments, hit us up in the DMS. And uh, I think we need to have some, you know, episodes that are kind of, and we've done these before, like t top 10, how to start selling on eBay. But I think we need to reflect on some of those too, because yeah, starting right away. It, it's a hustle. Yeah. We almost need like another segment though, like uh reselling with the family and we could teach people how to, you know, incorporate because maybe you're like that too. You've been reselling for a while and you want to start getting your family more ah, involved in I the family business. Yeah. You know, so. It's true because he has all the tools available. He has the light box. I mean, he has a lot. He has mm -hmm. a thermal printer. I mean, he has everything available to him. But the hardest part is just teaching the skill of how to find things. Yeah. I think out of anything in reselling, I mean, that's, that's the core of it, right? How do you find things at a low cost that are worth a lot? And how do you do that consistently? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was, I felt terrible. I, I was hoping that our first trip, he would find like 20, 10 to 20 items and make a ton of money and he'd be all in. And I think he's still in, he's still in. He, he's, he's like me. He's a stubborn, he's a stubborn guy. And so he, uh, he's like, yeah, dad, let's go. I'm going to find stuff. I'm going to find stuff. Once he, uh, once he starts making a few sales, he'll, uh, he'll be hooked. I hope so. I hope, I hope it happens. Soon. That's the other thing I had to tell him. I said, you know, you might find five to 10 items, but they may not sell for a while. Right. That's the other part of reselling that not a lot of people talk about, right? You watch all these YouTube videos and you know, no one talks about, Hey, I had this listed for a month or two or six or a year. Right. I share that all the time, even to people surprised that I have stuff that I sourced four years ago that I just sold. Uh, unless you're selling hot items, that's kind of the name of the game, you know? All right. I got one more. <clears throat> I, I don't even know what happened here. So one morning I woke up to all these merchant fulfilled Amazon sales. I'm like, sweet. You know what sold? Mm. Hair clippers. Nice. No, not nice. Oh, you don't have them? No. Well, I had some. But I never created a virtual fulfilled Amazon listing. I never created it. Like I even look at my inventory. I went through my Amazon store. I'm like, do I have this listing? So I created it back in June when I was selling them. And then I removed it. I completely removed it. And even if I look right now, my inventory, I don't have that. I have an FBA listing because I sent a lot of clippers in FBA. So they started selling. Oh, no. So I sold, I sold four and they, they all happened within an hour. And I'm like, what, wh what is going, I, I can't stop this. Like I can't even find my listing. I mean, think about that stuff is selling that you don't own and you don't have a listing. It, like, think about that on eBay. I mean, how, how does it, I don't even know how that happens on eBay. Right. So I'm like, what do I do? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm going, okay, maybe, maybe for some reason I forgot about it and whatever. So I looked, I couldn't find a listing of my inventory. I'm like, okay, well maybe it's already sold out and I don't have to worry about it. Luckily I had about six units at my house. Uh, three of them were brand new and sealed because they were returned. The other three were opened. Right. So out of the four, I could at least still ship out three because for whatever reason, I had those still on hand. But here, here's what's scary. 
I went to the buyer side of Amazon and I look up these clippers and it shows me as a seller. I'm like, what? What am I supposed to? What? Like, how, how do I do this? I can't remove the listing because it doesn't exist. What do I do? So I emailed Amazon and sure, I get the boilerplate response, which, you know, I think Amazon's been great on working with sellers this last Q4. But I get the boiler 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 uh, boiler point boilerplate response and the response is basically yes we noticed that you have some in stock and that you had to cancel an order here's the email for our seller performance team and it, whenever you email amazon seller performance and usually you email them when your account's deactivated or something really bad happens and they do not get back to you if they do it's usually two three months it's really bad so I'm like, all right, well, there's not much I can do. So my only solution is I listed the price so high on these clippers that it deactivated my listing and I can't sell them anymore. How did you list them higher if you don't have access to the listing? So I went to the FBA listing and I listed them higher and that's what fixed it. Hmm. Okay, that, that's a great question. So somehow the FBA was coming up as merchant fulfilled. Now, how did I think about doing that? I don't know. Somehow I just thought, hey, if I list my FBA really high, maybe whatever listing is being used, it'll pull the other one. I don't know why I thought that, but it did the trick and it deactivated my listing and it's gone now. I mean, technically, you could probably order those items off of FBA and send them to your customers who got them merchant fulfilled. So I've done that. Here's the, here's, here's the tricky thing with that. You cannot upload. You don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You cannot upload the tracking because the tracking, if it's being shipped by Amazon, it's an Amazon tracking number, which doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So I did that last year. I had a Luva Bella thing that, you know, those baby dolls I keep talking about that were a fail, but now they're hot sellers. If you find them that sold last year and I, I, I don't know why I sold it merchant fulfilled. I think I sold it merchant fulfilled uh, because I thought I had one in transit. I was being stupid. I thought I had one in transit as a return coming back to me from a removal order that I put. And I never got it. So now I was stuck with, I don't know what to do anymore. And so I drop shipped Amazon to, oh man, Amazon bots are listening. And yeah, and, and here's what happened. I did that. I ordered it. And guess what? The FBA shipment never happened. Like it never arrived to the to the place. Now that my only, I think I talked about this. My only saving grace in all this was that it was a business, so I just canceled it, and the business never said anything about it. Yeah, I mean, when businesses are buying Lulu Vela dolls, I mean, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't. Why was it a business buying it? I don't know. So, anyways, long story short, that is my random story, and it's a weird story because I don't even know what happened. I don't even know. I, I've researched and I've looked. If you guys have any idea, how do things sell when you remove the listing? Let me know. Because I was, I was scared. Like, what if I sold 100? Just sounds like a glitch. Yeah. The glitch that would have destroyed me. I would have been deactivated. Yeah. So, all right. That is, I think, our. Uh, I have more random stories. But, uh, okay, one more. One more. Here's another Amazon glitch. Another Amazon glitch. I got a message from Amazon. I thought it was fake. It said, hey, by the way, we got a thousand units of this item. Is this yours? I'm like, what? Like what? And so it was like some kind of slime thing. They're like they sent me pictures and the pictures were a canister of slime on somebody's office desk in a warehouse. <laughs> Yikes. You should have just said, yeah, those are mine. Add them to my account. Well, I'm like, I'm looking at this. And I'm like, what? and I'm only kidding that we do not advocate lying. No. <laughs> that is not part of our business practice at all. But I'm like, this is so unprofessional. Like, wh what is this? And so it's maybe, a maybe your box like label, like rubbed off onto their box label and it got all confusing. I, I don't know. So they asked me, they said, Hey, can you send us your, your SKU and your, uh, your shipping label information? I'm like, what? Like, why would I do that? Right. I, and I thought it was fake. It was in my email. So I ignored it because I when I replied and I said no and I replied, it said, you know, I did that whole your email didn't make it to whatever. So I thought it was just a scam. I go back into my messages on my Amazon Seller Central and sure enough, it's an it's a legit Amazon message. Hmm. 
So somehow there's a thousand fifty two slime objects that somehow got linked that I sent them, and they don't know whose it is. I I, I don't I don't even know how that maybe happened. maybe it's part of the uh, the hack that happened. You know, or the the government hack where <laughs> all of all of our all of our classified information has been leaked to foreign governments maybe <laughs> yes. maybe part of that there's hack four, was there's, four, there's there's russians that are trying to sell slime via fba well, here's the thing though y- y- i mean doesn't i mean i think amazon lost the account but doesn't uh like amazon uh servers hold and host like a lot of information oh, yeah so oh, yeah huge so you would imagine like if there are bugs like maybe they're just trying to fix things and try and get in there and figure out what's going on and yeah i mean computer glitches happen all the time i'm not a i, I don't code computers at all uh, but if you've got a young child, I recommend teaching them to code because it's the future. It's really easy. Go code.org. I mean, we're not trying to sponsors, but I did that with my son. and He learned how to code pretty easy. So, I mean, he can't do high level coding, right? But, you know, it's doable. So anyways, yeah, that's, that was weird. I mean, that was two, two in like two days I had that happen. That's so, crazy. All right. Well, crazy. hopefully they found the slime owner. All right. And even worse than that is <laughs> the craziness happening right now with, boxes through usps but before we get to that before we get to that we got to talk about our domes yeah so hey so real quick our sponsor skull shaver has been incredible to us and you know the the items that we are using have been so helpful i gotta tell you i you know i when i wanted to take a break i wanted to take a complete break Mm. right i i didn't why i didn't want to have to shave my head at all but you know what it was really easy with the skull shaver Right. I could literally w- go and watch Cobra Kai and shave my head at the same time. And it all worked out. That's nice. That's that's right. an efficient use of your time right there. And uh, <laughs> going back to the word gravitas, you know, like uh, people will, will take you more serious if you present well. And, uh, you know, there's there's if you are a person who is lacking hair on your head, maybe just in the middle like I am, uh, you're not going to present well. You're not going to show well if uh, if you look like you. Uh, are don't take care of yourself, right? Because people notice that. And uh, Skull Shaver is a quick and easy way to say, look, I am a classy man. <laughs> okay. You know, actually, that's why I started shaving my head. I've never talked about some podcasts. I have like a ball patch like back here. Everything else is good except for here. So I have two options. I either come over. No, no, no. Oh, well, yeah, no. I grow my hair really long, mm-hmm. which I might do one day. Oh, don't do it. I might do. Lo- you know? Okay, so Orlando, if you grow your hair out with that long goatee... <laughs> Why? I'm self-employed. I can do what I want, but uh, mm-hmm. but I won't because I do like the sleek look that Skull Shaver gives me. So, have you had a chance yet? And you're considering, hey, should I shave my head? Should I not? Is there someone in my family or a friend that really could, you know, take this item and and ch- change their life? Go to SkullShaver.com. Use our promo code Pure. That's P U R E Pure at SkullShaver.com. Yeah. I also want to say thank you to all of you who have sponsored us uh, or, you know, or sign up for a membership through buymeacoffee.com slash pure hustle. Numbers are, are getting up and up and it's really helpful to us. And we really, really want to be able to provide more content. And so this helps us, you know, when we have those moments where we don't have a lot of sponsors and helps bridge the gap. So if we're losing money from not being able to resell because we're working on content, we're able to fill those gaps. So if you haven't had a chance yet, it is buymeacoffee.com slash pure hustle. And for less than a coffee an episode, less than a coffee an episode, does that work? Okay. Less than a cost of a coffee an episode? Less than the cost of a coffee a month. A month. A month. You can sponsor Pure Hustle podcast at Pure Hustle. So you can have one cup of coffee or you can have eight episodes. There you go. There you go. And we're hoping you choose the eight episodes. That's right. So that, and, and by the way, they'd be free anyways, but this is a way for you to say thank you and to help us out. Again, that's buymeacoffee.com slash pure hustle. That's right. All right. And if you have not been following us on social media, we are back to posting again on all platforms. We've been posting, but, you know, kind of took a little bit of a break. It was the first time I actually felt exhausted. Like literally exhausted, not done with reselling, just exhausted, but I'm back and and we're posting again. So you can find us on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook as Pure Hustle Podcast. We are Pure Hustle Cast on Twitter. Thank you to all the, all the Twitter peoples out there that are communicating with us. I think we're going to go to uh, like tweeting. You know, yeah. that's what you're supposed to be doing on you're Twitter. Supposed to tweet, yeah. I know. I've just been reposting what's on Instagram on Twitter. Yeah. And I think, I think now I'm a tweet. Yeah. Yeah. Tweet. Tweet it up. 
I just wonder if like, are people going to care what we have to say? That's what I always wonder. Yeah. I mean, you just, you got to look at Twitter as, as, as more of a, so like our, our, our reselling topics, those would be good tweets, like in a quick commentary on something, you know, a little uh, okay. article, All right. right? I like, think. Which it, t- tweeting is easier than posting on Instagram, yeah. you know? So I think we're going to... So, hey, if you haven't followed us on Twitter, follow us on Twitter. Also, on YouTube, if you're listening to podcasts and you want to check out our mugs or any new videos we're dropping, we may, may be dropping some videos here in January based on <laughs> how things go. Uh, we are Pierce Podcast. Make sure to hit that subscribe and that bell notification. And as always, you can shoot us an email, podcast at gmail.com. That's PiercePodcast at gmail.com. Or... Leave us a voicemail at 619-738-1170 at 619-738-1170. And thank you to all of you with the iTunes reviews. We almost got to the 400. If we can get to the 400, I'd be so grateful uh, just because it, I think it would put us ahead as far as like the reselling podcast. Mm. Right. I mean, we're there, but man, 400 reviews like that would be awesome. It'd be really helpful to us, especially in the That's algorithm. Right. And we're thanking to all of you that have already put in positive reviews and, and detailed reviews. It means a lot to us. It keeps us motivated. So thank you so much. And uh, appreciate all you guys. All you guys that bought shirts over this uh, Christmas as gifts and school shavers and all that. Thank you to everyone. So, all right. That's right. So, packages. Wait, but before we do that. Oh, that's right. It's been, it's, it's been a minute. The year is 2021. 2020 was crazy. But things are going to be looking up because we have new perspective. Things are happening in the reselling world and here to tell us about it out on the street, Orlando. All right. Well, it's, it's both of us, but yes. Um, are you still having lost packages? Yeah, I've got quite a few. I mean, it's almost fun to track them. It's, it's become it's a little, fun. it's become a game for my wife and I is to kind of watch like, all right, so this package that's supposed to go to like, I don't know, Pennsylvania. And it's like, all right. It went from here to LA. Oh, it went over to Texas. Oh, it's back in LA. LA for five days. Oh, it, it went up to it went up to Montana. Now it's back in Texas. I thought and everything from LA is going to Texas. Yeah, I mean, you just you just kind of yeah, it's true. <laughs> a lot is a lot of a lot of people are that's for sure. Um, but it, it's just kind of funny to watch. Like, what are they thinking? Like, like I understand if something has to like make a little detour. And then maybe get on like a bigger plane or something to go somewhere else. But when something goes somewhere, is there for a couple days, goes back to where it was before, stays for another few days before it finally starts to move in the right direction. It's like, what in the world is happening? So it's kind of fun watching the lost packages. But the whole time you're like, this is going to be a return. This is going to be a return. But yeah. And so I've been getting messages. I'm sure a lot of you are too, uh, where people are asking for a refund. And I get a lot of DMs on, on Instagram saying, Orlando, what do I do? And and the solution is this. And we've talked about this before. Once a package arrives, the tracking trails arrives, your part is done. Now, you could go the extra mile and you could say, hey, I'll follow up on you, let you know what your local post office says. But the message I always send is, you know, I'm so sorry that you were unable to locate your package once it arrived. Please contact your local post office because they would know best as to where they delivered your item or you know, whatever it is, because that puts the onus on the buyer. It, it it did arrive to where you sent it. And usually the post office has a far better idea. The local post office has a far better idea where that package is than you'll ever know by calling. Yeah. And the, the reality is they probably don't know, right? Because, you know, they could have lost it or it could have been a porch pirate thing. But again, we know how it is when you try and call the post office with something lost. So you're you're kind of putting the ball in the in the customer's court and you recognize that some of them might not even do it, right? Like it's not even worth it for them mm-hmm. to deal with the post office. And so you're not worrying about the refund or the return. And again, if they do, are willing to take that effort that it takes to get in contact with the post office, then yeah, then now the post office is going to be the one handling it. So yeah, I think that's a great response to give. Yeah, and it, and it's been it's worked out. I mean, I've had so I've had you know angry messages. We all get those angry messages. Like, hey, it shows delivered, but I didn't get it. And usually, I'm I'm very nice about it. And I say, hey, maybe somebody else you know checked it in. And maybe it was delivered somewhere else. Give it a couple of days, because you know what some post offices do. They show delivered, and it's actually in the post office still, mm. right? So that's why it's always best to let the buyer know. Contact the local post office now. The messages that I'm not liking that I've received that. I, I handle differently are the, my item hasn't arrived. I'd like a refund. Have you, have you received those? Yep. How do you respond to those? 
Um, again, it's very similar to the other one is I'm not going to provide a refund until they get the item or if it's been gone for a long time. So the hard part is I'm not going to refund an item that they're going to end up getting in a day or two days, right? Mm -hmm. Because now they have the item and it's free. Now, if it's, if they needed it for Christmas and it didn't arrive in time and they want to return it, then sure, I'll refund it when I get the item back, right? Because that's my inventory when I get it back. Now, if it's, if it's been missing for weeks and months and it never showed delivered, that that's a little different at that point. You know, I might, I might be willing to give the refund or, or deal with if you have insurance on the package, go that route. Uh, but if it's, I'm not going to provide a refund unless they return the item to me. Yeah, correct. And so there's different ways I hand, uh, different ways I handle it. So if the item is an item that's maybe less than $20 and it's been a while, I'll just, I'll, I'll refund them. Right. For the most part. I mean, unless it, it's something that's showing that it's actually been, you know, like a city away or it's nearby. I'll wait a little bit. I usually let them know, Hey, please give it a few days. If it does not arrive, please contact me and I'll work to resolve this. I never say I'm going to give the refund. I just, I just try to just string along, string along, string along because you know, what you're waiting for is for that package to arrive. And eBay has promised in their seller protections that they would not, you know, hold those negative metrics against you based on that. This is a known problem. And, and eBay has been pretty, as far as I know, they've been great about that. Right. And actually, I, I really got to give it up to eBay this last, you know, two months. They've been really great about helping sellers, you know, protect their, their selling metrics. At least that's been my experience. And so let's say, you know, I, I even got this on Amazon. I had somebody today message me say, hey, I didn't receive this item. I'd like a refund and the same message. Hey, I'm so sorry that your package hasn't arrived. USPS has still been, you know, dealing with major delays. Please give it a couple of days. Contact me in a couple of days if you have not received the item and we can go from there. And so, you know, I just, my, my goal is to just keep going, keep going, keep going because I don't want to refund items and then it arrives because then you're in a whole different, different mess. Like I, I don't even know how you resolve that. You don't, right. do they have the item? And I mean, you can ask them nicely, Hey, if the item arrives, please send it back to me. But <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know a lot of buyers that would do that. It, it does happen sometimes. I've had people do that, but it, it's very rare. So, so here's the, here's the, here's our tip. Our tip is if you can get ahead of it with a message, that is the best solution because people want instant replies, right? If you can give someone an instant reply, it kind of puts them at ease. They're not as tense. Right. But then you still have the really angry people. Right. And if they, they give you a super angry, you know, message, give it a few hours before you respond. Right. Because, you know, they they might be angry for something that's not related at all to that package. Right. Maybe they got a fight with their spouse or their kids or their car broke down and they're stressing about finances. Give it a few hours, you know, give it maybe the 23 hours and and 58 minutes until you respond within that 24 hour period and then message them say, Hey, I'm so sorry. You know, things have been really busy. I, I see that, you know, it's, it's been difficult that your package hasn't arrived. Please give it a couple of days and let's, let's talk again. Once, you know, we see what happens here. Yeah, I would, I would maybe argue the opposite. I would really? say, I would say respond as soon as you can. Um, the only time I would delay sending an email or sending a message is if you're the one that's frustrated. Uh, but hmm. I think if somebody's already frustrated, and they're waiting and waiting and waiting for you to respond, you're, you're, you're going to have more frustration. Whereas, like you said, if you at least respond, maybe they're still upset, but you've at least shown, hey, I'm taking, I'm taking not necessarily ownership of this, but I understand you're frustrated. I understand I'm not ignoring you. Your, your concerns are validated because, again, that's what a lot of people want to know mm. is, hey, that's good. Let's, I see you know, so, so I would say respond as soon as you can. That way, again, they see like, hey, this is not a seller because I think that's where a lot of people get frustrated is, did I buy from somebody who's basically a scam artist? Are they not going to, you know, they're not going to help me? Because anytime I've been scammed and you try and like reach out to them, yeah. it's crickets. Yeah, yeah. Right. So if you can, if you can respond right away, they at least know, hey, this is a real person and the situation is, is not being ignored. Well, I've had different scenarios. I had one where a person was really mad and blah, blah. And I waited a few hours and then they go, Oh, package arrived. Thank you so much. Really grateful. Right. So yeah, you got to play it by ear, right? You got to see. And, and you also got to play it at your comfort level, right? I'm more of like, when people are really angry, I'll just wait just because to me, it's 
they're they may they may be upset at the package not arriving, but if they're really mad, there's probably something else going on, right? That's just my thoughts. So take it, take whichever way. I, I think Mike's right too. There's multiple ways. Yeah, there's two truths. Eh. <laughs> yeah, one of us is right. I think we're both right. Situationally. Situationally. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I wanted to share this. Wait a minute. Did my voice just crack? Did it get high? I don't know what just happened. So this is something that I kept having to catch myself. And I shared this on Instagram. But if you're not following us on Instagram, you didn't see it. So the sneaker fees, right? So if you sell athletic shoes, if you sell athletic shoes that are $100 or more, you pay no eBay fees. Now, Do they have to be new? They have to be. No, they don't have to be new. Okay. So, I mean, let me, you know what? Let me read the eBay policy so we're all on the same page. But here, here's the thing. It's very easy for me when I send an offer that, you know, if the item's like a hundred something dollars, I'll send a, here's the best offer. Here's a send offer of ninety nine ninety nine, right? I'll usually say, you know, sending you an offer of ninety nine ninety nine for a limited time for immediate purchase, blah, blah, blah. But that one cent will cost you eBay fees, right? So this is what eBay says. eBay says, Sellers pay no insertion fees on eligible sneakers when the starting price of the item is $100 or more, not including shipping, handling, taxes, or fees. So it has to be $100. Okay. It can't be, and it cannot include shipping. Okay. Uh, in here, it doesn't say anything about whether it's new or used. I mean, right? it did say eligible. So, you well, might eligible is it has to be under athletic. Unle- athletic. Okay. That's what it means. So, yeah, you can sell used shoes for for over a hundred bucks, and and now they have to be under the athletic shoes category, mm. right, to qualify. Okay, so because yeah, I've sold I've sold used shoes for over a hundred dollars, not paid fees. So that is the key. So no, there is nothing here about whether it has to be new or used. If we're wrong, let us know. That's what we're about in the comments. And you never know. I mean, some there, there might be a new fat out or dress shoes are being used for a new type of athletics, like you know, office workouts. <laughs> So, uh, you know, get your Allen Edmonds up in the athletic category. Just so, there you go. So, but, but here's the thing, make sure that when you are sending an offer or even when you're listing it, do not list up for 99 99. If it's a sneaker that's in the athletic shoes category, because you're losing out money, just list it a hundred dollars or list it one hundred one ninety nine or whatever it is. Somebody suggested it on Instagram to just list it at 125 free shipping. And so, you know, if somebody sends you an offer, make sure that counter offer is just a hundred dollars and one cent. And there you go. You don't pay fees, right? Because uh, you know that I think it's like 10%. I don't know. Let's say it's 10%. That's $10, right? Mm. So it is worth it to you. So again, be careful because I almost sent out offers of ninety nine ninety nine on some athletic shoes I had that are over a hundred dollars. And uh, yeah, I would have lost out money because I would have been paying eBay fees. So just be careful. Good tip. So, all right. eBay shipping supplies coupon. Have you taken advantage yet? Not yet. But the other day we double checked to see if we had any left before the new one started. And uh, unfortunately we didn't. We, we spent all of our coupons, but now we have new ones, right? So yay. We are excited because we had to order boxes before that. The, the We got the new one, but now that we have the new one, there's always going to be a need for more boxes. So, always. Yep. Always. So, yeah. So if you do not know what we're talking about, you're a brand new reseller. It's interesting because I think everybody knows this, but they don't. So if you have an eBay store subscription, right? And it has to be basic or above. It can't be the starter, right? It can't be the lowest tier. It has to be the second tier and above. You get an, get an eBay shipping supply coupon. So what does eBay shipping supply coupon does? It gives you a certain dollar amount off of your order. So for instance, I have a premier store and I get $50, right? I think if you have an anchor, you get $150 off, right? And it, and it's great. I mean, the eBay tape, I love the eBay tape. I mean, I don't know. Are you a fan of the eBay tape? Yeah. I mean, um, I still am using eBay tape that I had from uh, eBay open, which was nice. You get uh, a lot of tape. Oh, yeah. well, we got a lot of tape. Yeah, we got a lot of tape. Um, Mostly because it was the last day of the convention and we walked by and they were just kind of handing it out, not just like singles. They were just like handing out like like packs and packs of rolls, right? So we we're mm-hmm. like, sure, no, we'll I take remember, some. I remember that. Yeah. I wish we took more. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think I think um, 
eBay tape is nice because it adds that flair, but if you already have an eBay box, um, I, I would rather spend the coupon on eBay boxes and just get regular tape that I can get cheap anywhere uh, because it's not always easy to get boxes anywhere that are the same size that I can get on eBay. Right. Mm -hmm. So I kind of go by ease of, of, of actually being able to attain. So it's harder to get eBay size boxes just anywhere you go for basically free, which you can do with the coupon, but you can get tape pretty much anywhere. So I would rather spend on eBay boxes. Now, if I have a whole bunch of boxes that don't have eBay markings on them, it's nice to use the eBay tape because it adds that flair. Uh, but um, we've kind of moved more and more towards trying to ship most of our stuff through eBay boxes because it, it just, it's nice knowing you've got the boxes, they're organized, they're all flat. When we have to look for boxes, which we still do, we have a whole ton of boxes that we've gotten for free. And, and of, of course, free is better than even paying, you know. But free small. takes time. But free takes time, right? So it is nice not to have to look. We could just grab like, oh, this will fit in this size box. We grab it, we build it, and it's good to go. Instead of digging through a pile of boxes trying to find one that'll work. So um, you've got to find what works for you if you're just starting out reselling uh, definitely do the free boxes, but you're going to get to a place where it'll be nice to have a, a, an inventory of boxes just ready to go and use that shipping coupon. Oh, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I think I've mentioned that before where it's nice when you can get it free, but the hard thing about free is it's not organized, yep. right? It's a whole hodgepodge of boxes, you know, and it, and it makes it really difficult where if you order boxes now, you can order from places like Uline, and you can get a really sweet deal. You just have to buy a lot of boxes and then you have to pay, you know, I, I think it's an absorbent amount, but you do have to pay for shipping. And it, I don't know. I, I'm just not a fan of the cost of that shipping. And again, I know people are going to come at me and be like, well, if you're a major seller, you know, that's da da da. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Okay. Yep. But, you know, you got to find what works for you. And so in the beginning, if you're low on capital, then maybe free is, is good and you can spend the time. But as your capital builds, Time is money and it's worth it to you to buy those boxes. And I agree with you. I mean, it, it's it's really it's really nice to just have that right there and not have to go digging or searching or or here's the one where you get a bunch of Amazon boxes from someone and you have to like retape it to know if it'll actually work. Yep. Right. Because you don't know exact dimensions of the box. Right. So so yeah. that's good. Yeah, it's good. And and again, so even going with that idea of like time is money, what we're really saying, because we've had people kind of comment against us on that is time can be traded for money and money can be traded for time, right? It's not that they're equivalent. You can't always buy more time, but there are times when you could say, hey, I'll, I'd rather use a box that cost me 75 cents so I don't have to spend five minutes looking for a box, right? So that's that's in a way you can either, and, and figure out what do you have more of? Do you have more time right now and less capital or do you have more capital and less time? And there's going to be a, a point where you've tipped over um, the the threshold of, this is way too much money. I'd rather spend a couple minutes looking or um, this is, I, I could save a ton of money by just finding the right size box, right? So there's going to be a threshold, but if you're within that threshold, yeah, I mean, spend time to get the money or spend money to get the time. Well, I'll give you an example of that. So Frankenboxing, mm -hmm. right? You can Frankenbox, but it takes time. If, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, Frankenboxing, the thing about Frankenstein, right? Frankenstein was built from different... <laughs> No, Frankenstein's monster was. Oh, Frank. Sorry, my bad, my bad. Sorry, the literature, literature teacher. I'm thank you for. I knew that. I just don't even know why I said that. Okay, yeah. So Frankenstein's monster was built, and so a Franken box is basically you take a box and you cut it to the you know dimensions that you need for a certain item. But that takes time, right? Instead of just having that box and just being able to just throw it in the box, you know, maybe bubble wrap if you need and seal it. And so this summer when I, if I, I keep talking about the clippers, but it's not because I'm trying to flex it. I'm just trying to use an example. So when I bought those clippers, there was no perfect box when I was in Wisconsin. So I had to go to Walmart and I bought a certain box and every single box that I sent out merchant fulfilled that I sold, I had to get a razor and I had to cut the sides and I had to fold down the sides, every single box. It took some time, right? That took some time. Now, when I went back home, I was able to find boxes that were a better fit and I didn't have to cut anything and I was moving. It was so much faster, right? It was worth it to me to spend the time to find those right boxes. And then it became even more worth it to me to just send them into FBA and pay the extra fees because I was able to sell a lot more, a lot faster, right? So yeah, you definitely have to find what works for you. I'll give one more example. I had a larger item that I was selling during Q4 
It was a, it's actually our, uh, is it our, no, it's not our bolo. It's our hustle of the week that I'm going to share this upcoming episode. So you'll find out what it is, but it was an item that I constantly had to make a Franken box. And it literally took me probably 20 to 30 minutes to make that Franken box. Cause I had to, it was a larger box. It was a larger item and I had to bubble wrap and then I had to find a larger box. I had to cut that box. I had to fold the boxes over. Then I had to cut the edges so I can fold the flaps down. And the tape job had to be intense because the box, was, it wasn't like a perfect flat lay. So I had to really tape it so it didn't like pop open, right? In transit. So at the end of Q4, I thought, why am I doing this? And so I bought two smaller, two smaller, like larger boxes that I could put one box on the bottom, tape it, put the item in, put the smaller box on top and just tape the middle. Mm-hmm. And that, that was like in five minutes. Nice. Right. So I paid $3 for those boxes, but it saved me that time. And it was worth me saving that 20 to 30 minutes to drop that $3, especially because the item sold at such a great ROI. Wow. Well, so. That's good. And uh, I'm sure people are tired of hearing us talking about boxes. So what's our next topic? But this is the recently podcast. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is what we're about. So yeah. I, I get what you're saying though. All right. So the last thing we want to share, and there's only so much news, which is a good thing. No news is good news is that kind of shocked. So Amazon has this thing called the inventory performance index. Basically, it's a number that they use to determine whether you have unlimited storage in their warehouse if you do fulfillment by Amazon, Amazon FBA. So they actually dropped the number. So the number before Q4 was that you had to have a score of 500 or above to have unlimited storage. So that meant that you had to sell through your stuff and mean and you couldn't have, you know, a bunch of huge items taking up space. Uh, you know, you can have strength, all these, all these different requirements. Well, now they dropped it to 450 and their message was interesting. They said, thank you for your cooperation. We implemented policies to ensure that all sellers have space for their products this holiday season. Independent businesses like yours that sell on Amazon, nearly all of which are small and medium sized businesses have surpassed 4.8 billion in worldwide sales so far this holiday season. And this was sent out on the 21st, by the way. That's an increase of over 60% from last year. That is huge. That's monumental. Congratulations. Thank you for providing terrific selection and low prices to customers. As the new year approaches, we are lowering the inventory performance index threshold to 450. If your IPI is 450 or above in week 51 of 2020, starting January 1, you will not be subject to storage volume limits. If your IPI is 450, da, da, da. So basically, they dropped the threshold. This is why I thought this was important. So Amazon, I think they have the perfect system as far as the business goes. They don't do a lot of the heavy lifting and they get a lot of money. Actually, they do a lot of the heavy lifting in the warehouse. In the warehouse, but they don't go out and source the item, right? right? They don't, they don't, you know, have these massive shipments. They just... They're an inventory management. Correct. Correct. Business. That's what they do, yeah. Yeah, logistics, right? So... I think this is a good thing. This to me says there's a there's still a plenty of opportunity for third party sellers because lowering that threshold means you can send in a lot more items. But I would say expect that it's probably going to go back up again Q4 of this year. It makes sense to me that maybe they would, it makes sense to me that they would raise it when things get intense and crazy because they want to ensure that they have the mm-hmm. top of the top sellers when they're everything is chaotic for them. Um, but then they want to blow it down so they can bring in those other people again and give you the opportunity to prove yourself before the next time things get crazy. Yeah. And I, I think I think the reason they did that is I think a lot of resellers have finally caught on with Amazon. I mean, I used to be the old school guy where I would send in stuff. I'm like, ah, if it sells in a year, it sells. Right. I use the eBay approach to Amazon. But Amazon's not about that. Amazon is about having the best price and selling it fast. Right. And if you can... Ap- Understand that that's the way Amazon works. You're going to do very well on Amazon, right? If you can find items that sell fast and you can find it at a, at a cost that's cheap enough that you can sell it at a low price, you're going to be good to go on Amazon, right? And so to me, this was like that is that compart, uh, compart, uh, compartment. There's that part. And then there's the other part of this that I think Amazon is expecting continual sales all through 2021. Like Amazon to me, it's kind of like the stock market, like the uh, the stock market. Now, stock market is unpredictable, but usually the stock market 
usually the the people that buy you know that have a lot of stocks they know more than the rest of the <laughs> general public right and so they make moves in the stock market before other people right i'm not saying insider training they just they know more okay i think amazon based on metrics and everything they've seen they're probably seeing that there's going to be opportunity for even more business in 2021 and they're lowering their threshold to allow for more items to be sent in because they know that those items are going to sell and it's not, there's not going to be a warehouse issue, right? Because they already, I don't know, they built like, a, I don't know how many, they built a ton of fulfillment centers this last year. And so I think they took care of some of that problem, but I think they're expecting online businesses to continue to soar in this next year, which I do too. So, you know, if you haven't hopped on Amazon yet, I'm not saying it's the end all of things, but it's definitely something you should consider. And it, and not only consider, at least at least list some things merchant fulfilled or or even send in some Amazon FBA boxes and see if it's worth it to you. So I like it. All right. So that is our reseller topics. Yeah. Which means we're moving on to everybody's favorite part of the episode. And, you know, for very good reason, because we're going to be talking about. And by the way. What's your bolo? I already hit the button. Sorry. I know. Said. We may have new sound effects that are coming our way. Yeah. I think I saw an email in the inbox, so we have to check it out. Nice. We've just been so busy, but I thought I saw something on there. So, all right. What's your bolo? So my bolo is we've talked a lot about like school stuff at home school stuff. Um, but what I've noticed I've sold a few of, which is interesting because they're older is diction software or dictation software. Okay. So their dictation software has come a long way back from the day when it very oh first goodness. started. Uh, but you know, you would have to wear the the little, the little thing over your head with the mic and you'd have to talk into it and it did an okay job and you could like type up essays and stuff. Unless you had a Latino accent, it wouldn't work for it, you. It'd be more difficult. It didn't work for me. No. no. Um, maybe the newer stuff will. Uh, but you know, there was a time when that was kind of popular. That and was the 90s. What I've noticed is I'm starting, I had a couple of them that I got and they're older ones. They're from like the, the mid, I don't know, 2008, 2012, like somewhere in that range. So they're not like brand new software with the, the headsets, but they're selling, right? So I can't remember the exact name of it. It's like the it Dragon. Dragon. Yeah, yeah. So it's Dragon, whatever the, the company is that makes that. And I've been selling them. And I think the reason why is with so many kids at home, uh, parents are recognizing that their students need extra help. Now, schools will oftentimes provide this, right? Um, in, at least in California, um, if, if a student has a special education plan or an individual education plan, and a lot of times they need somebody to, uh, they'll dictate what they want written and somebody will type it for them, or they'll have speech to text or text to speech. And I think a lot of parents are recognizing that hey, maybe my student doesn't necessarily need uh, the school to provide a bunch of stuff, but it would be really helpful if my kid who's doing at-home Zoom learning, if they can type their their responses in instead of, or talk their responses in instead of typing them. And so I think people are buying the stuff that maybe they knew worked. Uh, so you might be able to pick up dictation software or dictation uh, hardware. So like mine came with the little headsets too, uh, for relatively cheap if you find them at garage sales, thrift stores, because those are those things that people used a couple of times and realized that, ah, Maybe I don't want to keep this, but they tend to be selling. So, yeah. And you got to be, I mean, it has to be a very low cost for you to pick it up to make good money. And, and you have to be careful what model you pick. I mean, yeah. I'm even it's looking very at model specific. Yeah. The model, the model is key in that. So, yeah, I remember that stuff. I remember trying it and I thought, this is so awesome. And then, yeah, it didn't, it didn't work for me. It didn't work. Well, yet. maybe now. I, when I was, when I worked at a, at a call center back before I decided I was going to be a teacher and go back to school and, um, my typing was relatively slow and I knew that was going to be a barrier for getting into college. So I was like, I'm just going to buy one of these, you know, dictation software program things. And yeah, I tried it out and it just was terrible. It didn't really work well for me. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to learn to type faster. And so like my last few months at the job, like whenever I had free time and I wasn't doing anything, I would just practice typing. So I was just in my office typing all the time. So everybody thought I was working really hard, which I was still working, but a lot of it was like, I got to send this email. Let me type it up three times just to make sure that I can type faster each time. And, uh, and I practice typing so that I could type faster. But if you are, you know, for some people, if you've got, you know, um, the, the, the coordination skills or those fine motor skills, you know, sometimes 
talking it is easier because you can often your brain goes faster than your hands can go and then that can mess you up so yeah look up dictation software again it might not be the thing for you but uh, you can oftentimes get them for a dollar right a couple dollars and you know i've been selling them for like 30 40 bucks so yeah it's good all right so Mine is an interesting one. So I, I've talked about Carhartt a lot, but Carhartt is a hot seller right now. If you can find vintage Carhartt or no matter how worn it is, actually somebody had DM me on Instagram and said, we actually have a contest. Actually, it's one of our listeners uh, had said, uh, we have a contest in our town of who has the most worn out Carhartt jacket. I thought that was kind of interesting, but Jack is like Carhartt, vintage J. Crew, vintage Abercrombie and Fitch. Remember that song? I like girls that wear Abercrombie. I mean, that's, that's, oh no, you're too young to remember that song. There was actually a song that said, I like girls who wear Abercrombie and Fitch. I'm like, and that was, it was a one hit wonder. But anyways, if you know, you know, give it, give us the applaud emoji. All right. So anyways, this stuff is selling. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. And I think the reason it's selling is, you know, again, we're having a, a rebirth of the nineties right now. And not only amongst people my age, but amongst teenagers. Like they're wanting the 90s again. I mean, 90s music is coming back, you know, 90s colors are coming back, all that. And part of that is some of these items that were late 90s. So I, I don't remember J. Crew and Abercrombie being big in the I mean, Abercrombie's been around for a long time, same with J. Crew, but late 90s, they're they're pretty, pretty big. And I'm finding that stuff, whether it be like sometimes there's Abercrombie and Fish jackets that are like they're like jackets for swimmers, kind of. Like if you sw you're on a swim team and has like the inside kind of wool lining and has that nylon outside, like those are selling really well. Uh, kind of like that rustic barn jacket look for J Crew is selling very well, and uh, it, it's it's hard to determine. I I can't tell you. You know I know exactly how did you know if it's vintage or not, but I've just been picking it up and they've been selling. So J Crew Abercrombie and as always Carhartt stuff. If you find the older stuff, even if he has even if it has paint on it, even if it has you know dirt on it, even you know it'll still sell. Now Carhartt has been a bolo since I've started reselling. That that's been a strong market, but. I'm kind of I'm kind of interested in how J. Crew and Abercrombie lately some of their vintage pieces and when I say vintage I mean '90s and maybe even early 2000s is, is selling for good money. I mean I sold the Abercrombie jacket that I paid ten dollars for for about ninety. I sold a J. Crew. I sold two J. Crews, paid less than twenty bucks. One for over a hundred, another one for over a hundred, one for about ninety and eighty. I mean stuff is selling. So keep an eye out for that stuff. You know normally when you look at J J. Crab or Crombie, you would pass it over possibly, but I, I would say take a look, a second look, because there's money there. So that is my bolo. Yeah. All right. So what are you looking forward to? Um, kind of like what I talked about at the beginning of the episode. I I'm looking forward to kind of finalizing plans for 2021. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really big on you have to have a target that you're aiming for and you're moving towards, but you also have to recognize that as you're moving towards that target, that target might change. Uh, but it needs to change intentionally, right? If you don't go into um, a week, a day, a year, whatever it is, with some kind of a focus and intention of where where do I want to get to, you're going to end up just going in circles. You're never going to get close to anything because you don't know where you're going. Uh, so my wife uh, and I are going to sit down and spend more time uh, just looking at what is it we want to accomplish. And a big part of that is, you know, paying off debt, trying to pay off our trailer completely as soon as possible. Um, all of the things that we need to do to make eBay more efficient and effective and, um, you know, taking taking our, our lifestyle to the next level, but doing it kind of almost the Dave Ramsey style in being willing to take make a lot of sacrifices, mm. right? To cut things out of our life, to spend less on other things, to live like nobody else this year, so that in a couple of years we can live like nobody else. Have you ever heard of Mr. Money Mustache? Mm -mm. Yeah, you know, check it out. I, I I know Scavenger Life talk about them, but they kind of have that same approach. They, you know, I think I, you know, there's this whole movement in the 20s where people like only took, I think, 10 percent of their salary and 90 percent they invested or whatever it was. Maybe that's an obnoxious number. Maybe it's 25, 75, but you know, living out in the land, cutting mm -hmm. things out, like it's it's awesome what you're doing. Like it's it's great. I, I'm at a stage in life that I can't do that. But if if I was at if I was your age, I hate saying that. If I was your age, 
I probably would be doing a lot of that. You could. I mean, you could. You could. You could do it because you I, might. I'm in my 40s, man. Yeah, 10 years from now, you you'd look back and say, "Man, if I was in my 40s, I could have done that." Yeah, I, I just. I, okay, I'll be real. I love the comforts of life. Yeah. Like I just, I, I, I just, yeah. I'm. I, again, in my, I had more energy in my 30s, and I, I'm not. I'm not like slow or anything. Like I, I still, you know, I source all day. I, I hustle all the time, but. There's certain things I'd rather just pay somebody else to take care of. <laughs> that's where I'm at. So, all right. Well, that's awesome. Okay. Do you have more? Nope. Okay. What about you? What are you looking forward to? So I'm looking forward to training my helper more. My trainer has been phenomenal. I mean, this is how good it's been. I basically, so I dropped off a bunch of shoes and baseball gloves. And I said, Hey, listen, I could show you how to take pictures of these, but just find my listings and just copy that. Mm. And it worked. I mean, she figured it out. Good lighting, good angles. Like it's been great. So I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, how I bought that massive light box. And so my goal now is to train her and how to take pictures of clothing and how to do the measurements and then just scale that. Like that is that, that is what I want to do because I, I just want to, I just want to get to that place where I'm just sourcing and I'll still have my other massive light box in my home so I can, you know, there's a lot of higher end items I'd rather take care of. Not that I don't trust my helper, but I don't ever want to leave something to my helper and then she accidentally damages it. Like, that's just a terrible feeling. Like, not not, not for me, for that person. Like, I, I, I've always been that person where I hate it when, you know, something gets damaged that somebody borrowed from me and they feel really bad about it. I'm like, no, no, don't worry about it. Like, I don't want to do that. So I'll still take pictures of higher end items, some of the items that I think need more attention. Uh, but for the most part, I want to be able to leave and, and just keep sourcing and keep moving on. And uh, I am finally at a place. I've talked about this before and I keep talking about it and it's getting better where I want zero inventory in my house. Zero inventory. So what that will take, I haven't talked about this with Mike, but maybe M Mike and I can, you know, work on something. <laughs> That we can use together. Uh, and uh, what it may mean is, you know, I'm going to have to be really strict about how fast things get listed. Like no death piles. Right. Because that, that is one of the reasons that things stick around is that, you know, there's some things I'm like, uh, I'll get to listing. And then it just piles up and it piles up, piles up. And then, you know, I take pictures of a few items. I'm like, ah, you know, what? I'm just going to leave this here. I'm sure it'll sell. And then it just sits there and it sits there. And, uh, yeah, I just, I'm getting tired of seeing stuff in my place. It's weird. It took three years of full time for me to finally go like, yeah, I don't want this stuff in my house anymore. So I don't, don't get me wrong. I love reselling. I just, I want separate spheres of life. So I think I'm getting closer to that. So we'll see what happens. Nice. So, all right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. It is new year. It is 2021. It is yeah. time to have gravitas and perspective. That's right. And with that being said, hey, make sure to be real. Be relevant. And be reselling. Late. Peace. Happy 2021.